that every now and then, you know, at some point, you can't just be separate, but sometimes isolated to hear from God. You got all this stuff bombarding your head. This person saying this, this person, this person full of you. At some point, it requires a time of isolation to end up getting ready for, 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 for elevation. Let me give you what this means. Scripture. Everybody knows about Paul in the Bible. What we don't know was that, when, that before Paul started ministry, some accounts say he spent years of just being quiet and still before he began ministry. Because he had all this stuff he had to work through. You all know the story about Nelson Mandela in prison for decades. And while he's in there being in prison, instead of getting bitter, he got better. Instead of getting bitter, he, he got better and came out to end up being the president of South Africa. And then when Oprah interviewed him, she said, he said, he said, he said, he said what, what were you doing for 26 years? He said, I was in there thinking. She said, can you just do that on a vacation for about a week? The idea at some point is about saying whatever is going on, there has to be some ice. Don't feel like when folks start walking away from you, that's a bad thing. Maybe your time of isolation. Don't feel like when you're by yourself, that's a bad thing. It's just time for some elevation going on. God is saying, you, I'm trying to take you higher. And you hold on to this dead weight over here. And this dead weight over here. And this dead weight over here. And this dead weight. I'm trying to make sure. I'm trying to take you higher. But that dead weight is holding you down. You are a hot and hot air balloon. And you got some sand that's keeping you down. I want to cut what God said. I want to cut all that so you can go higher. Elevation is going to require some isolation. And we always think when folk walk away, it's a bad thing. Praise God. And I pray that it's about saying it's going to be about this isolation. This isolation. If we want to go higher, there is going to require not only separation, but isolation just to be able to think and hear from God. That's why our daily devotional time is just so important. Where you get away from it. See, you can't have, see, well, most of us, we have, we have our devotional time on the fly. Let me talk to the Lord while I'm eating breakfast. Let me talk to the Lord while I'm driving. That's all well and good. But there has to be a quiet time where daily I'm talking to the Lord. And more importantly, hearing from the Lord and getting instructions from the Lord about how my day, order my steps in your word. I thank you right now, oh God. I don't know what's going to happen on this day, but you do. And I'm coming before you quiet so I can just hear what you want me to do. That it requires this elevation is going to require some, some isolation. But oh, but don't get, not the, I got I give you a two for the day. Now, all this is going to require isolation. Get this right here now. But first of all, let's read this verse right here about why isolation is important. Because if we continue to remain around the wrong people, we're going to eventually, we're going to pick up their behaviors. Right. Let's say it another way. If you want to see somebody's future, look who they hang with in the present. Come on now. You, you don't have to be, you don't have to end up being a prophet. If you, if you, our God son, when he was young, I don't know if he had problems with the word, with the TH words, but he'll say, at that point he said, Mama made me put on my belt because she didn't want me to be a dud. <laughs> so if you, you, you watch folks hang around tugs, and they end up being some tugs. At some point, you, know, this one, you can tell somebody's future about who they're hanging around present. Now, please write this verse down, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. The Bible, I'm telling you, everything you need for life and godliness is already in the Word. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Now, I want us to read this one together because it talks about why it is important to not only have separation, but also to have, at this point, isolation. Let's read this together. Do not be so deceived and misled. Evil companionships Communion, associations, corrupt and depraved, good manners and morals and character. So, again, you can have somebody who never said a cuss word in their life. Hanging around folk cussing, and bitch, what are they going to do? You know, the idea is someone that, and, 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 and at some point, and some people say, I ain't need to be around them. But the idea at some point is about saying, then it, it's going to, my elevation is going to require some isolation. And sometimes the folk we are around are not helping us to fulfill God's will, but are stunting God's will. This past week I had, I had this wonderful experience. It, you know, everybody's back in school right now, and kind of the excitement about being out being back is kind of worn off. And so now people get into the regular teaching and everything. Had this one guy who was just always, 
had to keep moving him around, just like always just talking and talking. So he had a meeting with him like on, on last Friday and talking and said, and I noticed on, on Friday he just he was just quiet. And I'm thinking, I thought we'd have a fever, but whatever it was, I was glad he wasn't talking. He said, I realized as long as I'm hanging around them, they're gonna always hold me back. So this young boy was, was mature enough to realize that his associations will hold him back. So he had to have some separation and some isolation. There are some adults who are not willing to let folk go, who we know right now who are not good for us. Well, I'd rather have a pizza. That is some point when I say, no, if I want to go higher, I'm going to have to have some elevation. If I want to go higher, i got to have separation, but I also have to have some isolation. Now, here's what happens. If we don't have isolation, look what happens next. Be, watch this from there. If we, now, please read this again. I want us to read this out loud three times again to get in our spirit. Greatness requires isolation to prevent Greatness requires isolation to prevent contamination. One more time. Greatness. You, now, now, I'm going to tell you right now. You may not feel great. You may not think you are great. God called you to be great. He didn't send his son on the cross for you to be average. He didn't send his son on the cross for us to be ordinary. He sent his son to die on the cross for us to be extraordinary and to be great. And because we are great, greatness requires what? Isolation to prevent what? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, what happens, this wrong thinking and worldly thinking will start contaminating us if we don't have isolation. If you look at one of the challenges about why, if you go back and look at the Canaan, when, when, the, when, when, when God told Joshua to go back and everybody was supposed to be assigned in different areas, to go back and conquer this part of the land, conquer this part of the land, the reason the people, God said, get everybody who was there out of the land so I can be your God, you can hear from me. What they did was they mixed and then get rid of all of the people who were there. And in turn, they were never as great as they were destined to be. What am I saying to us? That sometimes it requires not a mixture. It requires right now that God says, I do not want you to be contaminated. I have greatness. I have elevation for you. It's going to require some less isolation. But if we're not careful, this contamination will creep in. You know what contamination I'm talking about. Things keep us from coming to church, contamination. Things keep us, uh -oh. Things keep us from sitting and reading the word. We, in January, everybody made a confession in January. I'm going to get in the word more. I'm going to be the super Christian. I'm going to open my breath and a big S is going to come out. Be a super Christian. And somewhere around the 15th of January, <laughs> stop praying like it was hosting. So here, so, so all because, because contamination, this looked to be more important. This seemed to be more important. This was more interesting. And then we made a mistake and started in the book of Leviticus. And by the time we got to they're talking about the temple and, and all the sacrifices, and all that. so we didn't see any relevance there. And so in turn, our devotional time got reduced. I'm telling you right now, God did not call us. God did not create us. God did not choose us to be average. This whole year we've been talking about being extraordinary. Do I have some extraordinary saints in the house today? Any extraordinary saints in the house today? Any extraordinary saints in the house today? So because we are great, now here's the point, not extraordinary in our own power, extraordinary in his power. Not great in our power, but great in his power. Not above in our own power, but above in his power. But look what happened. If we are not careful and go back and start having isolation, after a while, some contamination goes. Sometimes you, got, you just got to know when it's time to, to change environments. So some, sometimes you can be in a toxic relationship, a toxic environment. The, the point is, if you're going to be, and what God is saying at this point, that if I called you there, I will sustain you. But God says, maybe your season is up. And our point is, we want to help God change seasons. I don't care how bad you want right now for it to snow tomorrow. It is not going to snow in North Carolina tomorrow because it's about a season that God has an appointed time and season already ready. What I'm offering right now is that sometimes it is time to have isolation because this contamination is going on in our lives as well. So here's the point. Again, I don't really have, so let's keep going here. Mindset matters here. Mindset matters. So from Hebrews chapter 10, I want to look at just a couple of verses here from this verse, although the whole time I want to invite you to read all of them. But I want to turn to Hebrews chapter 10. We were just in a book of James last week. 
And if you look, if you look, a card holders in the same place right now, let's go one book to your left. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10, and you find it. Now, if you go to this point, if you go to Philemon, probably read that this morning. Right behind, right behind with Philemon is Hebrews. Go to James, go on too far, Philemon too far the other way. Hebrews right there in the middle. So Hebrews chapter 10. Even though 10 through 39 is what we're looking at, I want us to call our attention to just a few verses here. So won't you repeat after me? I am ready, I am ready to receive the word. I am excited about receiving the word. I am prepared to receive the word. Let's stand even now in the presence of the Lord as we read from Hebrews chapter 10 together. And I'd like to read, I have, I'm gonna, we're going to skip around this just to kind of get some highlights here. And I want to make a few points with O's and we'll pick up the rest of them later on this afternoon for our teaching on, on Tuesday as well. Hebrews chapter 10. Let's read verses 12 through 14 together. Then we're going to skip down to 23 through 26. And then skip down to 35 through 37. So first of all, so the three the little blocks together. Hebrews 10, 12 through 14. If you had that from the King James Version, let's read that together. But this man, that this man being Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From his forth, the respected his, his field to <laughs> be Y'all did a good job. Y'all just keep reading. Read what I told you. And that need to be what I told you too. And let me read what I told you too. All right, here we go. All right. <laughs> and then, verse, verse 14. Then he said, Behold, I make all things new. For that one man's offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. All right, now let's go down to verse 23. 23, now even if you hear something different, pull me. Y'all want to try to read? 23 through 26. Let's go now. All right. <laughs> uh, profession of our faith without wavering. For he that is faithful and promise. That Luke have here. And let us what? Consider one another to provide what? Love. Love and keep going. And for good work, keep going. Keep going. Not, not forsaking the sin of ourselves together, as the man, man of son is, but exhorting one another. Keep on going, and so much more, as you see the day approaching. Now here's what happened, verse 26, we read this already. For if we sin willfully, every sin is willful, nobody may put a gun in your head, every sin is willful, God. After that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remains no more sacrifice for our sins. Now keep up, let's go down to verse 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. Keep going. For we have received patience, that after ye have done these things, the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Keep going, verse 37. For yet a little while, and he shall come, will come, and will not tarry. Now here's what I mean, you may be seated in the present, but I want to just look at a couple of words right here beginning with O. Right now, verse 10, if you would, I'll go ahead and read this. Here's your first O right here. All the words we talked about, just like we did last week with N, all these last few minutes would be with O. First of all, the O would be of God's will. Of God's will. How many people in here want to do God's will? Yes. Amen. Now here's the challenge. Sometimes it's hard to do God's will. Because sometimes we don't know his will. Mm -hmm. And so there are, there are several, I mean, there are several verses in the Bible that talk about God's will. I want to give us, I want to give us three today that begin with G. These are not all, these are not only ones, but these are some in the word about doing God's will. Of God's will. And I really believe there are people that again want to do his will desperately. But in terms of time, it's not clear what his will is. And sometimes miss it, trying to do God's will. And God is so faithful, even if we miss it, he loves us enough to put us back on track to be in his will as well. So the idea, what are these three things beginning with G that help us to go back in to do God's will? First of all, here's the first one. So how do we fulfill God's will? Here's the first one. The first G, give thanks. Give thanks. 
Giving thanks is God.